not available. Do you know, like all the projects were, were designed without thinking about what's the IT component, how we can ensure that like all this infrastructure will be available for future developments. So I think it's, it's, I think it's several billions of dollars. And so I think that's one thing that like we should uh, uh, complain to CBD, okay? And from now on, please make sure that every GF project has a plan for permanence of, you know, like all, all the products of this project. And so, so I think like basically I think we uh, now, uh, it's, it's very exciting, I think this decade is going to be uh, a decade of IC ICT developments and uh, how we can address uh, the challenge of building networked uh, 21st century institut institutions without walls. And also like here, like from birth to death, okay? Now CREA is a very small organization. I'm 65 and uh, the other two, like one is 50, another one 60. So we have to think that we will be dying. And uh, so basically how can we ensure that this is not going to be lost? So it's like maybe like a lifespan of work being lost. And so this afternoon I'm going to tell you uh, uh, what uh, our, our plans, like if CREA disappears like that, all the work that was done like by the CREA staff will be secure for, for the future. And so I think that's a big question like for all, what's the legacy of initiatives and programs to, to, to the biodiversity, to, 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 to increase the biodiverse knowledge base, like data tools and services in the open access and open source area. Okay, if the catalog of life, if the catalog of life and the encyclopedia of life disappear, how all the, the investment and all the work that was done will be not lost? I think we have like to, to think about. Because uh, I think uh, in Town's uh, presentation, uh, he saw like initiatives that uh, were deceased or are about to die, <laughs> and so that's that's evolution. So it's uh, nothing is, is permanent, and so we have like to to think about like ev evolving institutions and evolving programs, and uh, and we ha have always. Uh, to think about, okay, if that finishes, what will be the legacy? So it's really important, like, to ensure, like, the legacy of your project and, uh, and uh, okay, and how you can continue the work or start, you know, a new project, but without losing what what what, what you have done. So basically, uh, I think I run over the time, but uh, basically that's. That's it. So, if you have questions. Hi, thank you for your presentation. I guess I have. Okay. <laughs> thank you for your presentation. CREA has got a very long history of data mobilization and, and being able to disseminate it um, via the internet. Do you have a strategy in place um, which organizations to engage with, which take the seats to mobilize? Okay. Uh, yes, our strategy is to be opportunistic. <laughs> yeah, we, we are open, like it uh, doesn't matter the size of organization and uh, so it's, it's not easy because now we have uh, um, I think nearly 300 collections. And uh, you, you have like to think that Brazil is, is a continental country. And uh, think about Brazil is, uh, is a country that has about 120, more than 120 universities. Out of those we have like 50 federal, fund, uh, federal funded universities distributed all over Brazil. And now they're opening uh, universities in, you know, like uh, at the end of Amazonia and so like the, the Brazilian countries fairly well covered like with a, with a federal, uh, uh, federal, federally funded, uh, with uh, universities with uh, federal funds. 
And so basically, I think it's really important uh, to have like those collections, even if they're, they're small and even if they're not good. Because you know, like they are, you know, like they are collections that will be used, like for training students. And so I think this afternoon I'm going to show the work we are doing uh, with uh, the barrier of uh, those uh, universities. And so it's opportunistic approach, not only at the local level but also international level. I just mentioned like the collaboration with Kansas and uh, collaboration with the European institutions. So you know, like uh, considering like the continuous challenge and threat. We have like to be very opportunistic. Questions? Okay, now I move there. <laughs> Just a small question. It is about the dragon. I would like to know if you have some, what kind of data do you have on those dragon? If you can tell us. Data on? Dragon. 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 You, you, you the dragon the stuff. Orders. Huh? The data borders, the dragons. Uh, the dragons. <laughs> uh, I think um, that on dragons. <laughs> That's a difficult political question. Uh, yes, yes. I think there are dragons and there are crocodiles. I think the crocodiles are worse. But like, I think, uh, you know, like uh, usually um, those are institutions. And institutions depend on people, yeah. and people die. <laughs> Do you know, like I have like a very good friend, and he was the the scientific di director of uh, of uh, FAPESP, is the São Paulo State uh, Funding Agent, and he said, well, uh, science progress is because of the, the the good scientists, and the the progress continue because they die. And so I think, like you know, like we are like in a you know evolving situation where like uh, the people shape the institutions. And so, like uh, today, like a dragon or a crocodile might be a quite different institution in the near future, because there is this renewal of uh, new curators, new directors, and so. We have like to continue the work that we are doing, and I uh, hope like that this change will come soon. My question relates to sustainability in terms of funding. Yeah. Being a standalone kind of organization, is there any strategy you have in place for sustainability in terms of funding? Or well, yeah. The question is uh, sustainability and funding. Uh, that's why we are a small institution. Because, uh, uh, you know, like with all the achievements that we have, we know that we can survive even with uh, little funding. You know, because uh, like the way we assemble the, the network is, is a growing network without funding. And uh, the problem, our problem is we are, uh, the, uh, we, we have like project based, based funds. So like soft uh, grant and so it's really is a big challenge. And so now we are discussing with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the Brazilian government how we can be part of a bigger institution, but like keeping the flexibility that, that we have. That's, that's not an easy thing. But uh, what uh, I'm going to show you, which are our plans, what we are doing to ensure that even if the institution stops to exist, that nothing will be lost. So, so we are transferring all uh, the, the CRIAS information system to the, to the internet data center of the Brazilian N NREN. In, in your last statement, you're transferring it to? Uh, uh, we are transferring. This year, uh, we start like uh, to transfer all the not not to transfer is uh, the process is collocation mm -hmm. so the server we are collocating the servers in the 
Internet Data Center of the Brazilian National Research Network. And so is also a, a, a social organization that has a contract with uh, the Ministry of uh, Science and Technology, Ministry of Education, and Ministry of, of Culture. Since most of our collections are funded by the Ministry of Education, see, we do not feel comfortable of keeping you know, their data. And so we are just managing the data, but like all the systems now, will be uh, co-located at uh, this uh, Internet Data Center of the Brazilian RNP, RNP is the national NREN, yeah. So I think that, and that, that's, I think that's, I think a unique experience all over the world. Other Latin American countries are interested like in, in this approach. Given, given that Brazil is such a, such a big country and um, significant biodiversity, how many institutions are currently involved in biodiversity and information management in the country? Uh, Do you have an idea? No. Well, basically, in biodiversity information manage, management, I think the big, uh, the big su success is, from, is of Korea. Because uh, there, there is an effort of like the big institutions of the Ministry of Science, Ministry of uh, Environment, like to, to deal with uh, with biodiversity management, but uh, they, they they have problems because they are bureaucratic institutions. What uh, we 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 are seeing is a boom in research and uh, taxonomy. Is, is amazing. Like when you look like at uh, the, the developed countries like U.S. and uh, and Europe, like the the taxonomies uh, the taxonomists are retiring or are dying. And in Brazil, there is a, a new generation of young scientists and very qualified, well qualified people that are being hired by the new, to, to to work in the new universities, like you know, like federal. Uh, universities like distributed all over Brazil doing research and they, they are quite well trained people and so what you see in Brazil like the the, 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 the number of publications in you know, good impact uh, rate uh, journals is increasing yearly and so I think that that's, the situation is, is fairly promising I think but now we have like to work with them to first uh, to, imp to, to, to not to lose the data they, they're producing. And second, we need, uh, we need uh, uh, to, to set up like a very good uh, capacity building in biodiversity informatics. I think like I'm quite interested like in this exercise here to set up like not only the material, but uh, the training curriculum for biodiversity informatics because I think like for Brazil, this is really crucial. I would like to know, like, uh, would be wonderful if we could work together to do, like, to develop, like, a very good uh, training uh, curriculum for biodiversity informatics in developing countries, like, such that we can share, you know, the, the tools and mechanisms and the process, like, to improve uh, capacity. I think uh, that's, uh, that's a thing that I'm uh, I have like to work better with town. This is, I think, uh, should be like one of the focus of the, the collaboration with Kansas. All right. Thank you. Uh, Last question. Yeah. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Last <It's> question. Nice. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> Yes, um, there are many issues raised about CBD, uh, CBD's failure to uh, achieve targets. And uh, you talk about uh, the achievement of one target in your country with regard to CBD activity, that is the list of plants, if I uh, am yeah. right. Uh, do you have any financial assistance from uh, CBD to achieve your, that target? No, I think not from CBD. CBD does not, is not a funding mechanism. Yeah. So CBD gives instructions like to GF on what to fund. 
and GF has like the national capacity building programs. So GF funds like uh, on a country basis. So uh, from my understanding, I, I didn't, uh, I, I learned that through Yabin, uh, because like Yabin got six million US dollars from, from GF to develop the network. Uh, but it was, was a quiet process because like the early funding mechanism of uh, GF was on a country basis. So countries that are eligible to get funds and uh, some of the countries are fully funded and uh, other countries are just uh, co-funded. Like Brazil, like this uh, CBBR uh, uh, project, uh, I think like for, for uh, for one US dollars that we get like from GF, we have like to co-fund uh, three US dollars. And so out of uh, 28 million dollars, uh, 20 million dollars are from Brazil, Some, something like that. So the different rates like for different countries. And so I think that the mechanisms can be very interesting, but uh, they have like to be well explored. Like for, for example, GF, uh, funded many projects in Brazil, like, uh, by the, you know, like the Ministry of Environment uh, Biodiversity Program. But if you ask, okay, where's the data? There is, you know, like all the data is in the drawers. And that's fault of the Brazilian government. And so and I warned them. This, uh, I did this warning, I think it was 92. No, no. To, uh, no, 2002, I said, okay, you have like all this funding mechanism and what we are going to do with the data, how we are going to process, how we are going to, to secure that this data will be, will be there like with, with the years. So that's a problem. I don't, I, okay. okay. I got a comment on something. I see the lessons learned. Similar to the Kenyan situation, where we have had several GF projects related to biodiversity information management, and what uh, has come out is the challenges you have talked about. Maybe where we come up with a plan proposals which are never implemented, and we also have like uh, we have established a CHM which is not really functional because of funding, because of capacity. We also have uh, a problem of biodiversity because we don't really have a comprehensive regulation. First time we had initiatives where we came up with a biodiversity country study, it's listing the statistics how many species we have, amphibians, fish, birds, but it has never been updated since 1992. Yeah. So those are the serious problems we are also experiencing in the country. Yeah, I think like, uh, again, is. Uh one of those big problems is the issue of uh, biodiversity information is data on species. Yes, yes. Because it's, it's much easier like, to set up like, programs to capture satellite data or whatever data, you know, like data generated by machines and you know, like, uh, the deluge of data. But we are not talking about critical data to do biodiverse analysis. I think, uh, I think uh, there's like an issue going on now about the essential biodiversity variables, where they <laughs> the essential biodiversity variables are not biodiversity. <laughs> and so I think uh, that's, that's one thing, like, uh, because you have like all the other programs, like, uh, you know, climate changes, uh, the geos programs like the, the, the system to monitor the system of the systems. But see, all those are, you know, like high-tech data generated by high-tech devices and so, but like uh, the critical issue is the issue where you need like uh, expert opinion. You know, uh, I'm involved with another international project. That's the Catalog of Life. And it's extremely difficult to continue the updating of the catalog of life because, you know, there is no international funds to support the development of the catalog of life. 
So I think that that's you know a core issue. That's okay. How can we do like a catalog of life if, if there is no no funding? But uh, that's the issue. Is the issue is problems of funding for capacity building, and uh, the issue is uh, uh, strategy and vision to do the right funding on what is really needed. I think that's that's problems in your countries, but also like in those uh, international forums, yeah.